Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the biological law of accommodation and how it kind of gets misunderstood online with the best way for people to, to deal with this. And oftentimes it can lead to information overload and some really convoluted, uh, complex methods that aren't necessary. And in some cases might hinder your progress. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Work on skill up my crafting a little bit and let's talk about this. And for those unfamiliar with this, a, a lot of this, where it comes into to the, the mainstream discussion of training, a lot of it comes from Louis Simmons and Westside who have their own way of dealing with this. It may not work for everyone, um, but the, the biological law of accommodation is basically the observation in the human body that if you repeat the same stress and stimulus, over time the body accommodates and you get less and less of a response in the body. Now when it comes to training stimulus, because that, that's a form of, of stimulus that causes the body to uh, adapt, we notice that every time you repeat the exact same training stimulus. And what I mean by the exact same training stimulus, that's, let's say you're squatting three sets of five with 225 pounds on the bar. If you did that for the next six months, you would probably gain a certain amount of muscle and strength the first week, a little less the second week, and even less the third week. And after about the third week, you will stop adapting. In other words, if we were to run DEXA scans and muscle biopsies and everything else, after about three weeks of hitting that exact rep and set scheme with the same bar speed and same tempo, you're not gonna change anymore. In other words, you're gonna gain about as much muscle and strength as you possibly can from doing that after about three weeks and you're not going to adapt any further. Now what ends up happening, a lot of people interpret this as, oh, if you don't make some crazy change to your training, uh, within three weeks, in some cases every week, that you will completely stop and you won't be able to get past that. You'll be completely stuck. And they act like it's some big barrier, some big roadblock. Uh, when the reality is, when you really understand this, this is why we have the concept of progressive overload. Right? This is also why we have the concept of periodization. And if you guys go back and look at the story of Milo of Croton, it already addresses how to deal with this, doesn't it? Because everyone out there wants to say, well, we just need to rotate through exercises. Guys, what side does that so that they can hit 100% max effort? Right? They can hit 100% max effort on detrained exercises. And West Side, for their max effort work, they worry about this because they're hitting 100% grinding one rep maxes on a couple different exercises every single week. If these were not detrained, it would probably be too much for them to handle. But they want to be in that mindset of pushing 100% because that works with their mindset towards hitting maxes in competition. You guys also need to remember because they're equipped, uh, a little less specificity can be gotten away with in regards to that because it's actually a lot of trouble for them to put all their suits and stuff on uh, all the time in training. So what you're seeing with West Side is they do detrained maxes and they get around this by just rotating through exercises every time. But that's not the only way to deal with it. In fact, uh, Louis Simmons will tell you, you cannot train the way that we train without drugs. So if you guys are thinking that that's the best way for anyone who's, who's natural to do things, who's not going to be wearing squat suits, bent suits, everything else, I'm sorry, it's just not the case. And you remember they do other stuff. They also run all of their dynamic effort days, which is half of their days a week, in three-week ways where they change stuff on a three-week basis. So they're dealing with it in a different way on those without even always changing exercises, right? They don't even always change exercises, really. Not every workout. Uh, but they just sometimes do a close variation. You go from bands to chains, chains to bands. But what you need to understand Milo of Croton also bypassed it, didn't he? Because in the story of Milo, uh, he went into the strongest man in ancient Greece and he got a bull, bull calf, a little calf, and got it on his shoulders and carried it around every day. And, he, and as the calf grew, by the time it was a fully grown bull, he was able to squat it off the ground because he carried it around every day on his shoulders and squatted it up every single day and his strength grew in proportion to the body weight changes of the animal. Well, here's, here's the thing. A baby growing calf is going to have gained measurable weight every three weeks, won't it? So therefore, because he simply lifted a slightly heavier weight each day, and in this case it was probably ounces, if that, 
because you guys have to remember a fully grown bull during that time period is not what we have. It met both probably a 400 pound bull. So he basically did a half squat and squatted up a calf until it was 400 pounds every single day. Well, realistically that took it what, maybe a year and a half to get there. So a gradual increase over the course of a year and a half, it, it gained probably a couple pounds a week. Yeah, you can make straight linear progression on a partial squat like that, especially if you're already strong. You could, in over a year and a half, you can get up to a 400 pound squat by adding micro plates to the bar that are the equivalent of the weight gain of a calf. You know, so you go from 90 pounds to 400 over a year and a half by adding ounces at a time every single day. Yeah, you could do that. That would work. Well, that bypasses a law of accommodation, doesn't it? Progressive overload of any type bypasses a law of accommodation because you're adding weight. If you add a single pound to the bar, you're now having different training response stimulus. In other words, that 225, so before you get to the third week, make sure that you add a pound. That will literally bypass this. In fact, most novice linear progression programs, you're adding weight every workout and, or at, at the slowest every single week. So you'll never get to three weeks with the same training stimulus. And what people need to remember, something as simple as changing one of your accessory exercises or a different exercise impacts this. In other words, you don't need to change all of your exercises. What people need to understand when you're dealing with the big movements, there's carryover. In other words, if you get stronger at your pull-ups, doesn't that affect your deadlift, your squat, possibly your bench press, some of the muscles involved? Yeah. You've got a new training response. You can adapt to that. That will sometimes increase strength and allow you to add strength to another lift in a few weeks. So what people need to understand, bypassing the law of accommodation only requires you to at least somewhere in some major exercise that you're doing change the stress in a way that gives more adaptation. That's all that it means. That's the reason that classic periodization was always done in three week blocks. Even when running the same exercises, you might not ever change exercises for your primary lifts ever at any point during various forms of, of block periodization, but you're changing the rep range and the volume every three weeks, aren't you? Well, that works also, that bypasses it. Uh, sometimes just adding in a different accessory movement or taking out a different accessory movement will help you bypass the law of accommodation. What we're saying when we talk about this is that uh, for novice lifters, this doesn't apply because they can just straight linear progress. What we're saying for more advanced lifters is that you just need to make sure that you adjust the training stress in some way, some major way, somewhere in your training at least once every three weeks so that you get a novel training stress, a new training stress that causes some adaptation. That's all that it means. That could mean changing one rep, one set, changing the weight on the bar just slightly. That's all that it means. That, that's all you have to do to bypass this. In other words, you can't do the exact same thing for more than three weeks and continue to adapt. And there are going to be cases when you regress as advanced lifters too. That's normal. Uh, that happens. That happens. Changes in your diet and sleep alone can cause that to happen. But the point is, we know that we're not always going to continually adapt all the time, even as more advanced lifters. And, you know, particularly if you say you start cutting or you have a little more stress come up in your life, yeah, you might uh, back off just a little bit on some of your lifts. That happens. That happens. But when you're trying to make progress, you just need to change something every three weeks. Problem solved. Uh, but people make this out to be a bigger deal than it is. They think that, oh man, I've got to be changing exercises all the time. I better go from a flat bench to an incline bench. Uh, and, and I get questions from people oftentimes who think that this is what they have to do and it's based off what either some YouTubers are telling them or, or and they're getting that, their original material, they're getting that from Westside Barbell. That's where they're getting it. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Westside. If you're going to be an equipped lifter on anabolics, then Westside is actually pretty good. It's actually a really good choice. But understand what it is and what it's for. 
All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.